Good morning and welcome to the Men's Bible Class. I'd like to thank the radio station for this for our time, but most importantly, I want to thank Jesus. And we're here this morning to praise and to worship Him. Daryl, can you read some words for us, please? Let us pray. Father, we are indeed grateful for another opportunity to serve you, Lord, in this life. Knowing, Lord, that the days are as never before closer to your coming, Lord. We come honored to be called your children and blessed, Lord, to be here this morning to worship and praise your name. Lord, we lift up this day and all that beholds. We lift up, Lord, our speaker this morning, the, the message that's coming, Lord, the music that's about to be played in worship of you, Lord. And we, we pray that you're here. Be pleased this morning by the worship of your children. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate those prayers. I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning this morning. Got a little overcast. I got a little excited last night. I looked to the southeast and I saw these big old thunderheads coming in there and actually thought a little thunder and a little bit of lightning. I was getting a little pumped, but we did. Uh, but that's okay. The Lord knows what we need as long as we get praying and keep being on our faces towards the Lord and recognizing He's King, He's Savior, He knows what we need, He's going to bring it when He brings it, and that's great. We just need to celebrate the day and the time and the place where we are right now and just truly give it to Him. Larry also wants me to remind each and every one of you again, Monday night we have play practice. Easter pageant coming up on Easter, the Saturday before Easter. There's a lot of room, a lot of places, a lot of love. A lot of parts to be filled. Uh, please show up. It's a blast. Monday, tomorrow night, Silent Hill, 6 30, be there, be square. Or uh, the next one. Yeah, we can always use a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. Uh, now, let me get out of the way for a while. I've got some guys that want to leave us in some music. I'll let them go. <laughs> Thank you. 
recognize that the Lord never puts, puts more on your plate than he, he doesn't feel that you can handle. So, as I said, there's a rearrangement that's a positive rearrangement. I'm blessed in everything that's going on in my life and everybody that's in my life. I'm, I'm very thankful there. But it also, there's a, there's a kind of a rearrangement, an adjustment of time that I haven't quite got to yet. But that'll happen. I'm not too worried about it. But it deals with some of the time that I spend with the Lord. You know, I was trying to, normally on Saturday nights, I mention to you sometimes that I really get into watching Billy Graham. Well, Billy Graham last night watched me sleep during his sermon. So it just kind of happened. So this morning, as I was trying to do Sunday school lessons and stuff like that, it was, it's a comfort, a new quickening of things that I'm trying to get used to. But I was listening to a gentleman preach this morning, and he came across, and he, and he really had some good words. I kind of gleaned some stuff from him, so I don't mind sharing with you. Last week, I talked about it not being the T-shirt. It's about what's in your heart. And he was very close to that again today when he started talking about it in Luke. And he started talking about the Good Samaritan. And at first he was he was questioned by a lawyer. And we recognize that at times the, the uh, Sadducees and the, the religious leaders at that time were always trying to catch Jesus in a trap. And uh, a lawyer sent up, was sent there and he was, they were always testing him, questioning him. And he said, what is it, you know, basically... What should I be doing? And Jesus came back and answered. He said, What's the, what, what is the commandment that's on your heart that's most important? He said, Love the Lord God with all your heart, body, mind, and soul. And then from there, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. <clears throat> and the Good Samaritan, as we know, there was a guy traveling down to Jerusalem and he came up with going down a real rough path. And as he went there, he was. Uh, held up by robbers. He was almost beaten to death. He, all his clothes were stolen. All his, all his personal goods were stolen. And he was left for dead. And basically, as he was left lying in the road, a priest came by and passed by and looked at him and didn't touch him. Left him alone. Soon after that, a Levi came by, who was also a kind of a religious leader at the time, came by and saw him in the road and passed by and left him. And not shortly after that, a gentleman from Samaria came by saw him, and he picked him up, put him on his mule, he clothed him, he bandaged his wounds, he took care of him, he saved his life, he took him down to a hotel at that time, and he checked him in and gave him, the innkeeper basically, he gave him money, and he said, here's enough money to take care of this guy, I've got to go on to build business, and when I come back, if not enough money, let me know and I'll, I'll give you the rest, and therefore the story of the Good Samaritan. And as the lawyer kept questioning him, Jesus said, what do you think about that? He said, well, that's, that's, that's how we need to be towards other people. We need to take care of people. And Jesus basically said, well, go out and continue to do this in my name. And it kind of reminds you, he jumped over the book of Acts because Jesus was leaving his disciples. He was ascending into heaven. He said, go out and be witnesses to me in all parts of the world. And that's what we're all supposed to be doing. It's not about just going to church. Church is great. And we need to be there as a, as a, as a Christian community learning more about God and getting fed and recharging. But we need to go out and help the hurting. We need to go out and be witnesses to Jesus Christ and be good Christians and walk up and down the road and do as he did versus just saying, I go to church every Sunday morning. I go on Wednesdays. I even, well, I, well, I think about going on Sunday night. <laughs> but it's about being a witness for Jesus Christ as we walk on this earth every day. It's about helping the hurting people as Jesus did. He didn't ignore anybody. He reached out to everybody. How's your heart? I ask you every Sunday, most every Sunday, how's your heart? Are you reaching out to people and you or are you just going to church doing your one-hour good deed? Will people 
Jesus Christ. It's a great day to be alive. Before I begin what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, my brothers and I and my sister, we decided that we were going to borrow some money and make an investment for our future. And so we were looking at property. And we found this little strip mall that we thought we could afford and, and that we were going to possibly buy it. And uh, we looked into it. And so when I came back home, uh, my son and my wife, they were asking me, well, what did y'all, what did y'all do? And I said, well, we looked at different property, and I said, we, we had this, uh, they, show, they showed us this strip mall, and it was in a good location, and, and, and uh, it was brand new, and, and we thought that would be a good investment. And there was a friend there with my son, and he was saying, what are y'all going to buy? I said, well, we're going to buy this little strip mall. And later that day, my son came back to me and he was telling me, he says, well, my friend uh, was asking about that, that property we were going to buy. And when I told him it was a little strip mall, his answer was, I didn't know y'all were those kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you don't understand everything. So, Whenever I discuss that property with people, I tell them it was a little mall. I don't use the, I don't use the word strip anymore. This morning, I would like to begin by telling people that as I walk through the community here, walk through the town and walk through the community, I, I talk to a lot of people and, and they tell me about things that are happening in their lives. And they say, Bob, pray for me. Or this person needs prayer. They, they found out that they, they've got this disease and, and, and this old one over here has got health problems and this old one over here has got financial problems and this one over here, th th their wife has left them or their husband is gone and they're having trouble with their kids and, and just in this community alone, there's so much need for prayer, so much need for people to go out and help people. And I got to thinking about the world as a whole. Just this little community right here needs so much. And then when you look at the world as a whole, how much need is needed all over the world. And it's too much for someone to think about. And that's why I love God so much because he can handle it. That's why I take it to God and I say, you know, Lord, I hand this over to you. Because he's big enough. And you know, I love serving a big God. He can handle, there's not one thing he can't handle. And I've gone out through the community and there's people jumping up and down. And, and they're screaming that this power line's coming in. Well, it's going right through the middle of my property. And I just lifted up the Lord and I said, Lord, you're bigger than this. If it's coming, let me be a man of integrity. Let me show them that there's a godly man that's coming across and, and that I will welcome because if it's going to serve and help people down the line, that's what it's for. And if they decide to move it, you know, God took care of us. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be one of these people that gonna gonna, gonna be upset and get all nervous and, and and think that they're destroying everything because you know God gave it to me. And if it's in His plans for it to come across my property, that's what's gonna come. Now I'd like to begin, and I'm going to read out of Second Timothy, and we're gonna read about a gracious man, Paul. He's old and he's in prison. And this is not the first time he's been in prison. But he's getting older in years. Life's been hard on him. And he still has a strong faith in Jesus Christ. And he hears of Timothy. 
Timothy's out there and he's struggling because during this time when they were spreading the word of the gospel they didn't like Christians and the church the congregation that Timothy was was put together was breaking up and there was, was hardships in the, in the church because not, not things that were going on in the church but because people weren't coming because they were afraid they didn't want to be arrested and if they were arrested most of the time they were put to death <clears throat> and a lot of times if you got thrown in prison back then that was death, just slow death they didn't have thermostats where the jail was temperature controlled it was just a cold dark place to be thrown in very little to eat Paul wanted to encourage Timothy. This is hard time, but don't lose your faith. And I'm going to begin reading in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. Paul's writing to Timothy. It says, Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galilee. Titus to Dalmatian, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I send Tethicus to Ethicus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus in Torres, and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Paul was telling Timothy, if you can come, come. I'd like to see you. Bring me my scrolls. And probably the scrolls were parts of the Old Testament. And the parchments were, I'm sure, letters that he had written that are now books of the Bible. And he was trying to encourage Timothy. And as we begin to read over here, I want to read over here in, in, in the second chapter of 2 Timothy, verse 1. It says, You then, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And in 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. So, do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a heron and an apostle and a teacher. And that is why I am suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him against that day. <clears throat> Paul, when he wrote that, I know whom I believe, was convinced without a shadow of a doubt that what he had given Jesus Christ, nothing can take it from him. Nothing can take what Paul has given to Jesus away from Jesus. Paul had given his life to Jesus. His soul. He, he said, Lord, I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. And I believe who you are. And because he gave his life to Christ. He knows that when that day comes. When his death comes. Will arrive. That Christ will be there. And I'd like to ask you a question this morning. What can you say, this I know? What can you say, this I know for sure, without a shadow of doubt, it's going to be like it is today, and it's going to be that way tomorrow? Can you honestly say, this I know for sure, that everything that you possess, 
will be yours tomorrow. Can you say it about your finances? We have seen the stock market change many times. People won the lottery, and you hear about them being broke and in debt. They cannot say, and we cannot say about our finances, this I know for sure, that I will always have this investment. I will always have this money. Because finances change. Can we say it about our health? Can we say this I know for sure, that this health that I have, this healthy body, will always be healthy? We cannot say that about our health. As I grow older, I feel the pain in, in some of my joints from injuries of the past. My body is not as strong and it's not, it's not as flexible as it once was. So I cannot even say this I know for sure that I will always have good health. Just last week, I finally got a hold of a friend of mine I've known for 58 years. He was my best friend. And I asked him, how's your wife? And silence grew over the phone and he said, Bob, my wife is gone. She died of cancer a couple of years ago. You see, cancer came. He told me that I dreamed of growing old with my wife. And that we were going to travel around and we were going to see our children and love our grandchildren and, and, and we were going to do all these things together. But cancer came and it changed it. And he cannot say this I know for sure that I will always be with my wife, my soulmate. Years ago, many years ago, my brother-in-law was expecting a child. And the child was due any time. And Bailey and I were living on a ranch out in West Texas. We were about 75 miles from out by Texas. And it took about an hour and a half to get there because we had to travel down dirt roads and county roads and finally get to Alpine. About 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, you don't want to get those phone calls that late at night brother-in-law. And he says, I need you to pray. M -m Melissa has gone into the hospital. They cannot hear the heartbeat of the baby. Pray. And I went to my wife and I said, we need to go. And as we arrived to the hospital, Melissa was in the operating room. They were going to do a C-section and they were going to try to save that baby. Well, it was born dead. Didn't make it. And we prayed for them. And as they brought Melissa out of the operating room, they, they took her into a recovery there. And Mary and I were in the room there with her and Farrell was still talking to the doctor. And I was holding Melissa's hand. And she was coming out of her anesthesia. And Farrell entered the room. And he had the little baby in his hand. And he called her by name. He said, this is my daughter. And she is with Jesus. And I want you to know, Bob, and I want you to know, Melissa, and I want you to know, maybe, that this does not lessen my faith in God. And then I thought about that scripture, this I know, whom I believe will guard against what I have given him against that day. This I know. Pharaoh's faith and God did not lessen. He believed that what he gave God, God would guard. And he knew that there would be hardships. And he said, this does not lessen my faith. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, what a strong man in God. Today he has beautiful children. And he is a minister in a church. 
and he is over the farm ministry and he travels all over the world now because his faith in God did not listen. And this is what Paul was trying to tell Timothy, don't be weak. Don't be weak during the times of hardship. Have faith in God. So you can say, this I know for sure. And I'm going to ask you today, what can you say, this I know? Let me finish this by prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, those who are traveling, those who are out there listening, accept Jesus Christ as who he is. And so you can honestly say, this I know for sure, that he will be there for me. Amen. I know I tell you, Adelaide, I know Jesus is going to take care of it. Oh, yeah.